A test of faith. Again, about the three Jewish fellows, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. A test of faith. This is out of chapter 3 of Daniel. I'll actually be reading a little bit of scripture here this morning. Verses 8 to 30, but before I read, just starting in chapter 3 at verse 1, just sharing a few moments. This is a story about Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon at the time. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar wanted a golden image made. And this golden image, of course, was 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. And everybody was commanded to worship this image. And if they didn't worship the image, Nebuchadnezzar would throw them into the fiery furnace. That's where this story takes place. So as we pick it up in verse 8, with the three fellows, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Jewish fellows, but of course would not bow down to the image. Starting in verse 8, it says, Therefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the psaltery, and the symphony, with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due to regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in a rage and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, symphony, with all kinds of music, you uh, fall down and worship the image which I have made. Good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, said, to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. An expression on his, the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it already it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of the Lord who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, the furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished <clears throat> as he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire?
They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four, four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The Nebuchadnezzar <clears throat> went near the mouth of the burning fire and furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High, God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego <clears throat> came from the midst of the fire. And the sand traps, administrators, governors, the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men, on whose bodies the fire had no power, and the hair of their head was not singed. Nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, and they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that many people, nation, or language which speaks Anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces, and their houses shall be made in hashim, because there is no other God who can deliver this, like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Praise God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word today. We thank you, Father God, how you are an awesome God, Father. How you delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from that fiery furnace, Father. Not even a hair on your head was singed, Father. Father, may we walk in faith as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do. May you speak to us today through your word that we may apply this to our own personal lives, Father God. I pray that you would fill each person here with your Holy Spirit, that they will have a personal encounter with you through this, Lord. I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. Everything I share and say come from you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pretty awesome story there. And as we look at this scripture that I read just this morning, this blazing, blazing furnace was not a small oven for cooking a dinner meal. Or heating a house. It probably was a huge industrial furnace that could be used for baking bricks, melting metals. The temperatures were so hot that it ensured that no one could survive under the conditions. As we know, the roaring flame could be seen above its top <laughs> opening, and the fury blast killed these soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up there. <clears throat> As you go back and look at verse 12, there are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We don't know whether there were any other Jewish individuals <coughs> that wouldn't fall down and worship the image, but we see that these three were singled out as a result as what probably most likely happened the Chaldeans were worshipping the golden image there and they noticed that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not. So they kind of tattled on them, so to speak, and said, King, these three men are not worshipping the golden image. And this, of course, made Nebuchadnezzar very upset. And he wanted to make single them out as a public example. Why didn't the three men just bow to the image and tell God they didn't mean it? They had determined never to worship another God. They courageously took a stand. As a result, they were condemned and led away to be executed. These men didn't know whether they would be delivered from the fire or not, but they knew that they would not bow down to any other God but the true God. They didn't know whether they were going to survive or not. It didn't matter. Their faith and tests were so strong that they, no matter what, they would not worship anything but God himself. 
And as we look at this, are you ready to take a stand for God no matter what? When you stand for God, you will stand out. It may be painful. It may not always have a happy ending. Are you prepared to say, if he rescues me or if he doesn't, I will serve only you, Father. Only you. And again, I can just share, many of you have heard most of my different stories here, but as I was preparing this, you know, and I, I shared this many times, but I have a couple of examples in my own personal life just to share. And the one I, I shared quite often with you is concerning this, a uh, similar type of a situation when I changed mission boards and went from Campus Crusade for Christ One Mission Board to North Market Mission Board, and I shared with you the Battle Church that actually said that uh, they weren't sure they were going to support us because we were changing mission boards. And I was asked, what do you think about that, Ron, if we do not support you anymore? And I can recall <coughs> sharing with the pastor, well, you take it to the council board and pray about it, but my allegiance is to God. My allegiance is to God. God is calling me to change and go in this direction. So you have your meeting, do what you need to do, but I have to go with God's calling me to go. A week later, they came back and they said, we're going to continue to support you, but not as much as we were giving you. But we'll still continue to support you. Then I had another... Uh, situation in my martial arts school. I would do a lot of private instructions and many times it gave me an opportunity to talk about the Lord for people. And I had shared this with us before. I had an individual, we got talking about the Lord and different beliefs and so forth. And I was sharing about Jesus Christ with him as Lord and Savior. And uh, Jesus is the only way. And he got into his a disagree with me, with me and saying how can uh, I be limited thinking that way whereas he believed that there was more than one way to get to God to get to, to, the, to the Father not only by Jesus and I said I disagree and I quoted John 14 6 Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me and this fellow got so irate he took two private lessons a week on and he got so irate that he actually just said, you're narrow-minded and I'm leaving. And he walked out of my door, slammed the door and walked out. And I could just remember, I uh, just praying to the Lord, Lord, please help me. Well, it was about a week later, he called me up and apologized and wanted to come back. And he had shared with me that, um, that uh, he's very sorry. He said to me, uh, I don't believe in what you believe, but I respect you for it because you're a man of faith because you wouldn't give in to what I do. And I said, thank you for that. And he came back and after that we just basically didn't talk about it anymore. I just continued to teach him. But again, there's going to be situations in our lives. Are you willing to stand up for your faith, the test, or do you cave in, or do you conform to the world's standards? Here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not conform. They would not conform. They would not bow down to the golden image. Is there a golden image in your life that you're struggling with? And as we look at verse 13 here, that Nebuchadnezzar was in a rage and gave him the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and brought these men toward, toward the king. He's ready to throw them in the fiery furnace. 
And supreme ruler Nebuchadnezzar expected obedience from these men. But his pride caused him to go beyond his authority and he de his demands were unjust and his actions were extreme. If you look at verse 15, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had one more chance to bow down to the golden image. I'm going to give you another opportunity. And you know, if you're here today as I move on through this, I pray that you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Because see, at any point, everyone, the rapture can come. And I share this because after the rapture, everyone, is the tribulation. Father. And you don't want to be around here for the tribulation. Because that's where it's going to be very similar to what's going on in this story right here with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You're going to have to kneel before the Antichrist. And if you don't, you'll be killed. But there's still a time to accept Christ at that time. But you'll be killed. Unless you take the mark of the beast. That's similar to Shadrach, Peshach, and Abednego bowing down to the golden image. But he gave them one more chance. And I have eight excuses they could have made to bow down to the image. Eight excuses Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have gave. Number one, we'll bow down but not actually worship the idol. Compromising their faith. But we'll bow down but we won't really actually worship the idol. Number two, we won't become idol worshippers, but we'll worship it this one time and ask God for forgiveness. We won't really be idol worshippers, but we'll do this this one time and then we'll just quickly ask God for forgiveness. Number three, the king has absolute power and we must obey him. God will understand. That's putting Nebuchadnezzar above the true God. Wrong. King Nebuchadnezzar appointed us over the affairs of the province of Babylon. We owe it to him to do this. Wrong. It's compromising your faith. This is a foreign land. God will excuse us for following the custom of, of the land. Oh. <coughs> Number six. Our ancestors set up idols in God's temples. This isn't half as bad as what they did. Wrong. We're not really hurting anybody. What's it going to hurt? Yes, you are. You're hurting God. Because it's wrong. And number eight. If we get ourselves killed and some pagans take our high positions, they won't help the people in exile. So we have to bow down to it so we don't get killed. So we can continue to help our people. Wrong. <laughs> Trust God. Which they did. They didn't know whether they would be delivered or not, but they trusted God. But I shared this because many times, even us as followers of Christ, will think of excuses not to follow the ways of the Lord and give reasons. And as we walk through this earth, through this world, our faith will be tested many times. Although these excuses may sound sensible, 
to some people, they are very dangerous. To bow down and worship the image would violate God's command in Exodus 23, you shall have no other gods before me. So there is no excuse. Nothing can make it right. You shall have no other gods before me. And it's trusting God, our God, the Almighty God, our Father in heaven to deliver us. Whether we live or whether we don't. And this would also erase their testimony for God. Never again could they talk about the power of their God above other gods if they fell into one of these excuses. What excuses do we make for standing, not standing up for Him? What's the greatest command? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's the greatest command. Second one, to love others as yourself. Have no other gods before me. We go down to 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. That is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire and furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O oh God. But if not, let it be known to you, O oh King, that we do not serve your gods, nor we will worship the golden image which you have set up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were presented, were pressured to deny God, but they choose to have faith, no matter what happened. They trusted God to deliver them and they were determined to stay faithful regardless of the consequences. Whether they were to live or whether they were to die, they were going to follow God. And if God always rescued those who would be true to Him, Christians wouldn't need faith. Whether he intervenes or not, we should honor and worship him. No matter what we suffer, he may have an eternal reward for what we suffer. <clears throat> we look at verse 19. The Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, an expression on his face. And it changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <clears throat> the flames were so hot, we understand that it killed the guards that even got near there. We look at verses 24. The, the King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished as he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, did we not cast these three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to the king, True, O king, look and see. I see four men loose. There was four people in there. It was obvious that in watching that this fourth person was supernatural. We can't be certain who this fourth person was. It could have been an angel or the pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. But God sent a heavenly visitor to accompany these faithful men during their time in great trial. And as we go through great trials of life, God is there for us. That's why I like that verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They trusted. They were thrown into the fire and burned They didn't know where they were going to live or die. And, this, and you know, it's so awesome because it doesn't make sense. They're thrown into this fiery furnace and the guards were burned alive because they even got near. 
But yet these three men go to the furnace. <coughs> Not even a hair on their head was singed. And there was a fourth person walking around in there. You know, it's so awesome because when God's active, this is what I love about the Lord. Things don't make sense. That's how he loves God. Because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for them to go into this fiery furnace and walk out fine. And then there was a fourth person in there. Either Jesus himself or an angel was in there. And I love this, actually. I found that real interesting uh, in Scripture. It actually says here in verse 25, Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. It's pretty interesting. It says the Son of God, and this is in the book of Daniel, and this is even before Jesus Christ was still the scene. But yet, see, he always existed. Pretty awesome when you think about that. So I'm reading, these young men have been completely untouched by the fire and heat. Only the rope that bound them have been burned. No human can bind us if God wants us to be free. Amen. Hear that? Listen to me, everyone. You're indestructible until God wants to take you home to be with him. Think about that. You really are. That's pretty awesome. These three men were indestructible during this fiery furnace. And that was never turned it up seven times greater. It was just like this big fire explosion probably. And yet these men were untouched. The power of God. That power is available to us in the same manner that it delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and raised Christ from the dead. Trust God in every situation. There are eternal reasons for temporary trials in this life. Hear that? There's eternal reasons for temporary trials in this life. Hear that word? Temporary. This life here is temporary. There's an eternity out there to live with our Heavenly Father one day. God is ultimately in control, not people. And think about this. With Shabbat, Meshach, and Abednego, God is ultimately in control, not people. We need to understand that. People are not in control. God is in control. You may see circumstances and situations happening, but God is ultimately orchestrating events, putting things happening to have His will be done. It's really awesome. And for these three fellows, it was nothing more than a walk in the park. Think about that. Nothing more than a walk in the park. Because they were not even in church. It's like finish. As we move toward the end of this age, the furnace of opposition will be heated seven times higher. And the pressure, everyone, to conform will be stronger and stronger. The pressure to conform to a Lost world will be stronger and stronger and stronger. It will take a great deal of grace, prayer, courage, and faith for God's people to stand tall for Christ as we come living in the last days that we're living. We need great faith today to walk in this world. To stand up 
for the gospel of Jesus Christ to make that stand. That's why we're up here. It'll take great faith for God's people to stand tall for Christ while others are bowing to the knee of the gods of this world. Don't bow your knee to the gods of this world. Bow your knee to Jesus Christ, author and finisher of our faith. Amen. I like the book of Daniel. It's a great source of encouragement because it reminds us that God loves and cares for his people. And just like he delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from that fiery furnace, what fiery furnace are you going through today? What struggles are you going through today? Bow your knee before Christ. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. He will give you the grace. He will give you the courage to stand strong in Him. The same way Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. See everyone, as I close in prayer, you take scripture, you read it, you meditate upon it, and you say, Lord, how is this affecting me in my life? How does this relate to me in my own personal life? What fiery furnaces are you going through today? God will deliver you if you trust him and walk with him. We're going to close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today, Father God. I pray for anyone, all of us at one point, going through a fiery furnace, Lord, trusting in you, Lord, being guided by you to walk us through it, Father. As we walk with you, Father, and trust you, we will not be burned. We will see you in all your glory and at your control and you will walk us through, Father. Father God, I pray that there be one here today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Today would be that day to come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior, Father. Just admitting that they're a sinner, ask for forgiveness, and ask Jesus to come into their lives, Lord. And for all those that do, May you walk with them, Father. May you guide them through their fiery furnaces and see your, the outcome that you plan for them. For you have plans and plans for good, not for harm. I thank you, Lord, for this message today. And Father, I pray now as we're going to have people come forward for membership, Father, that you would fill our room with your spirit as we welcome them in. In Jesus' name, amen.